Saving lives, preventing disease, and reversing disease. You are listening to Dr. Richardson On Call, brought to you in part by the Atlantic Clinic of Preventive Medicine, William Richardson, MD. This program is not being used to make diagnosis, administer treatment, prescribe medications, or order tests. The information contained is provided as an educational service. This program is not a replacement for the relationship you have with your health care provider. If you have concerns about your health, please contact your health care provider's office immediately. Hello, ladies and gents. This is Andre 3000, one half of the group Outcast, and you're listening to Dr. Richardson on call on WCLK 91.9 FM. Hi, and thank you for listening to What Was at the Time, Dr. Richardson's very popular and informative, holistic, preventive, alternative health talk radio show, designed to save lives, prevent disease, and reverse disease. Furthermore, if you are interested and in need of a holistic alternative medical doctor, you can reach Dr. Richardson at 770-419-4471. That's 770-419-4471. And be sure to visit our website at acpm.net. That's acpm.net. Hello, good evening. I'm Dr. William Richardson, and I'm again inspired and honored to be your host on WCLK's Community Health Forum. Each month throughout this year of 1999, we will be on WCLK every first and third Wednesday, and we air from 6 to 7 p.m. We take in-depth and stimulating looks at the major health issues facing our community today, and we will be discussing the truth. We reveal up-to-date and compelling facts, figures, and statistics about many topics from mainstream medicine to holistic health care. Most importantly, we offer extensive recommendations on quality medical care, disease prevention and treatment, nutrition, diet, vitamins and minerals, cleansing and detoxification, immune system enhancement, herbs, lifestyle, internal and external exercise, as well as natural alternatives and complementary therapies. On this show, we request and encourage and demand your participation because this health forum is your show so that we require and appreciate your input. Go on and call us and ask your important questions when the time comes. Give your valuable commentaries on the major health and medical challenges facing our community today. Again, I'm your host, Dr. William Richardson, a board-certified medical doctor with over 16 years of experience in general internal, family, preventive, and nutritional medicine. My role on this show is to facilitate our listeners in the how and why of making intelligent health choices in medical care, nutrition, diet, vitamins, herbs, etc., As always, I am also joined in the studio by my brother John Richardson, who's the writer, researcher, and producer for this show, and I owe many thanks. Thank you, John. And thank you, brother, Dr. William Richardson, and welcome out there in Radioland, as I, too, uh, John Richardson, am also definitely honored, inspired, delighted, and highly motivated to assist Dr. Richardson in expounding the benefits of holistic preventive medicine, healthy lifestyles, diet, nutrition, stress management, as well as complementary and alternative therapeutics. That's why we're here. And we invite you to join us our next exciting show, Wednesday, March 3rd at 6 p.m., where we will be discussing everything you ever wanted to know about weight loss. That's right. Our next show will be our spring weight loss special. We will take an in-depth look at obesity, a time bomb against your health. Weight loss, weight management, weight control, weight reduction. Wait a minute. How about the science of bariatrics? Let's get technical. Regardless of the name, the truth is the United States is experiencing an epidemic of obesity among adults and children as follows. 35% of women are overweight, all races. 31% of men are overweight, all races. And an amazing 50% of black females are overweight. That's right, 50%. So we might ask, well, what's the big deal? What exactly kind of illnesses are directly uh, linked to obesity? Well, my friends, quite a few. High blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, gangrene, cancer, diabetes, sleeping disorders, osteoarthritis, gallbladder disease, depression, etc., and so on, to name a few. And you also should consider that if you just... 
uh, are 20 percent above your ideal weight, you're mm -hmm. three times more likely to contract diabetes, five times more likely to contract high blood pressure, two times more likely to contract uh, high cholesterol, and so on. And most importantly on this next show, just for you, we will review in detail Dr. Richardson's model comprehensive weight loss program that is effective, permanent, holistic, and safe, featuring, of course, a health screening, a basic dietary regime, no speed or drugs or weird diet foods, mm -mm. Uh, uh a, a book list that you can read to educate yourself because that's the key to this thing, the knowing the awareness of what you're doing, a uh, comprehensive nutritional di uh, lifestyle analysis, a buddy-buddy system, have somebody to share this experience with of, of weight loss and better health, support groups, and especially our favorite exercise, crunchies, aerobics, internal, external exercises, and the like. And finally, emotional triggers. We have to look at that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to close out, I'm certain that many of you will join us for our next show featuring permanent weight loss that is effective, safe, and holistic. And that's going to be Wednesday, March 3rd at 6 p.m. We'll see you then. Thank you very much. Okay, we look forward to that. Now I would like to turn to our very exciting topic for this evening, and that is yeast or candido infections, pathogenic bacterial infestations, yeah. and parasitic infestations. Wow. Parasites. Yeah. The untold problems with the digestive health. Yeah. Basically, what we're talking about is yeast, bacteria, and parasites, of which when they exist, out of balance or out of control can wreak havoc, resulting in poor digestive health that can lead to an extraordinary number of diseases, which we will go over. My friends, I want you to realize that while digestive diseases are the number one medical complaint in America, you should also know that digestive disorders are also probably the number one most misdiagnosed complaint. And mistreated. Indeed. <laughs> Many people go to the well-meaning doctors with serious complaints of digestive problems, and their doctors may run all types of blood tests, upper GI series, bare minimums, colon, colonoscopes, flexible sigmoidoscopies, motility, motility studies, etc., and I've then tell the patient, you are fine, according to these tests. Yeah, I've had these tests. They're not fun. Barium enema is real fun. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm <laughs> That's sure real they fun, are. buddy. <laughs> and they may be necessary. Yeah. Uh, very much so. I've, we've had diagnoses of cancers we were able to get rid of by those such tests. But many times the doctor, after all those tests have been done, if there's nothing they find, they say, you are fine according to the test. <laughs> or the doctors may just prescribe the latest suppress the symptom drug regimens to temporarily abate or halt the symptoms, which in turn may eventually create more dysfunction and never really get to the root causes of problems, as well as possibly causing serious side effects and toxicity. Well, my friends, tonight I'm here to tell you that while poor diet, bad lifestyle, lack of exercise, nutritional deficiency, stress, and etc. Yeah. can lead to poor digestive health, we must not overlook the untold story of yeast or candida infections, pathogenic bacteria infestations. Pathogenic means disease-causing, mm. as well as parasitic infestations. Oftentimes in my office, we find these culprits that are in an underlying root cause position or problem leading to poor digestive health, resulting in a host of digestive problems and many other diseases. While almost all diseases have a very significant connection, we find that yeast overgrowth, bacteria, and parasitic infestations, especially involving conditions and illnesses, including poor digestion and absorption of your protein, carbohydrates, fats, as well as hemorrhoids, stomach ulcers, constipation, gas and bloating, recurring colds, flu, sinus problems, autoimmune disorders, such as rheumatoid arthritis, impaired immunity in general, chronic diarrhea, irritable bowel syndrome, acne, acid indigestion, uh, nausea, just not feeling well, tiredness, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, colitis, eczema, food allergies, and as I said, chronic fatigue. It's a major cause of chronic fatigue syndrome. Yeah, and so, you know, on all these illnesses, many, 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 many times, there's a component of yeast, candida, pathogens, parasites, all this type of If you test the person, they'll have those problems, and those problems, a lot of times, by your general medical doctor is not being addressed. They're basically, a lot of times, suppressing the symptoms, and not, yeah. a lot of them aren't even testing for the yeast. And it, it's absolutely true. Sometimes these infestations can be a result of certain diseases, 
or they can be the cause. Mm -hmm. And either way, they need to be dealt with they because really the immune system is being stressed over yeah. it. Of course, then you have some people who don't go to bed on time and are fatigued and That's say, right. hey, I've had candid candidiasis, and when they really just need to go to bed on yeah. time. That's yeah, another or stop issue. eating five candy bars a day or yeah, the, the sort of antibiotics. Which eventually like will cause the same problem, though. Sure it will. You see. Sure it will. But anyway, anyway, we find that patients complaining of these problems and many others have, have a serious problem with yeast, bacterial, or parasites, those problems that we mentioned. Yeah, so now let's break down those underlying root cause culprits that microscopically, because they're micro microbes, that are disturbing the digestive health of millions of Americans. Yeah. First of all, we begin with yeast. Te technically, yeast belong, there's many um, species of yeast, the most common of which is Candida albicans. Yeah. And then there's many strains of Candida species. Yeah. So it goes from species to strains. Yeah. And uh, Candida albicans is a type of parasitic yeast-like fungus that inhabits the intestines, genital tract, mouth, esophagus, throat, and skin. Normally this fungus lives in healthy balance with other bacteria and yeast in the body. However, certain conditions can cause it to multiply, weakening the immune system and causing an infection known as Candidiasis. We test and find an enormous number of patients have candidiasis or yeast overgrowth. You may have it. Mm -hmm. Considering the following questions that have a strong yeast candidiasis link. Have you recently been, re been taking repeated rounds of antibiotics or corticosteroid drugs or acne drugs for one month or longer? Have you been troubled by PMS vaginitis? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> really? Yes, I Vaginal have. Vaginal <laughs> yeast infections, endometriosis, abdominal pains, uh, prostatitis, or loss of sexual interest? Are you bothered by unexplained frequent headaches, muscle aches, and joint pain? Do you crave sugar, bread, or alcoholic beverages? Are you frequently bothered by chronic fungal infections such as ringworm, jock inch, nail fungus, or athlete's feet? Or do you have hives, psoriasis, eczema, or chronic dermatitis? Are you oversensitive to tobacco, perfume, insecticides, and other chemicals? Do you have recurrent digestive problems like gas or bloating? Are you now taking or have you previously taken birth control pills for more than two years? Have you been pregnant more than twice? Are you bothered by chronic fatigue or erratic vision, spots before the eyes, poor memory? Do you feel depressed, sick all over, yet the cause cannot be found? Yep. Are the symptoms worse in damp, muggy days with joint and muscle pain? You may have candidiasis or yeast overgrowth if you answer yes to more one or more of those questions. Because candidiasis can affect various parts of the body, the most common being the mouth, ears, nose, gastrointestinal tract, and vagina, it can be characterized by many symptoms. These include constipation, diarrhea, colitis, abdominal pain, headaches, bad breath, rectal itching, impotency, mental, I'm sorry, memory loss, mood swings, prostatitis, canker sores, uh, which are very painful sores in the mouth, persistent heartburn, uh, muscle and joint pain, sore throat, congestion, nagging cough, acne, severe itching, clogged sinuses, burning tongue, white spots in the mouth, etc. And it goes on and on. Symptoms often worsen in damp or moldy, moldy places and after consumption of foods containing sugar and or yeast because mm. of uh, allergic reactions. Yeah. Because of its many and varied symptoms, this disorder is often misdiagnosed. When candida affects the vagina, it results in vaginitis, characterized by a large amount of white cheesy discharge and intense itching and burning. When the fungus infects the oral cavity, it's called thrush. White, white splotches or spots may form on the tongue, gums, and inside the cheeks. In the baby, the white spots of oral thrush may resemble milk spots. Oral thrush in an infant can spread to the mother's nipples, and it can go back and forth reinfecting each other. Thrush may also infect the baby's buttocks, appearing as a diaper rash. Candido infection may also take the form of athlete's foot or jockets. Systemic candidiasis, however, is an overgrowth of candida everywhere throughout the body. And in most cases, candida can travel in that, ca in that disease to the or by the bloodstream to invade every organ system in the body, mm -hmm. causing a type of blood poisoning called candida septicemia. Mm. This condition almost always incurs, occurs in persons with serious underlying illnesses such as advanced cancer or AIDS. Candidiasis may affect both men and women, however, it is rarely sexually transmitted, although it is. It is most common in babies, while an affected mother may pass the fungal infection to a newborn when delivering the baby, and in persons with compromised immune systems. Virtually all people with HIV-related diseases have some type of 
fungal infection. Anyone who has been on long-term antibiotic therapy or has taken antibiotics often probably has an overgrowth of candida somewhere in his or her body, whether they know it or not. Antibiotics weaken the immune system and also destroy the friendly bacteria that normally keep candida under control. As it proliferates, the fungus releases toxins that weaken the immune system further. Other factors that increase the chances of contacting a yeast infection include pregnancy and the use of corticosteroid drugs. Golden rules for controlling candida overgrowth, candida albicans and other yeasts. There's an opportunistic yeast strain that takes advantage of lowered immunity or, you know, an overrun body. Healthy liver function and strong immune system are the keys to lasting prevention and control of candida overgrowth. The whole healing rebuilding process usually takes three to six months or more, and it's not easy. No. The changes in diet, habits, and lifestyle are often radical. Some people feel better right away. Other goes through a rough healing crisis because the yeasts are dying. But most people with candida are feeling so bad anyway, if it's at a certain level, that the treatment and the knowledge that they are getting better pulls them through the hard times. Be as gentle with your body as you can. Give yourself all the time you need, many times three to six months. Yeah. A comprehensive, successful program for overcoming this disease includes the following stages. Kill the yeast, stage one. Kill the yeast through the diet change and supplement therapy. Avoid antibiotics, corticosteroid drugs, and birth control pills unless there is an absolute medical need. Two, stage two, cleanse the dead yeast and waste from the body with soluble fiber cleanser or bentonite. Colonic irrigation and herbal implants are effective here. Stage three, Strengthen the digestive system by enhancing its ability to assimilate nutrients. Strengthen the affected organs and glands, especially the liver. Restore normal metabolism and promote friendly bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract. And stage four, rebuild the immune system. Stimulate immune well-being throughout the healing process, supporting faster results in healing. Yeah, folks, so what we're talking about is the yeast and candida pathogens and parasites tonight. And Dr. Richardson uh, just, just went over the details on that. And I mean, it's implicated in so many illnesses or the result of having an illness. But so many of us have taken the antibiotics. You know, when we were kids, we took it for acne. We thought it was for acne, which was crazy because it was more our diet, which was causing the acne. Definitely. And, but we took it as if it was some sort of infection that we had to attack or destroy or something. And I mean, folks still have that kind of mentality. But, you know, a lot of doctors will prescribe those antibiotics, you know, if you even look at them crossway. <laughs> you know, antibiotic, then, you know, antibiotic. That's true. You know. Absolutely. And so, and then not to mention the birth control pills and, um, the corticosteroid, the prednisone, all those types of, all these things, you know, generate the yeast, and that's just from a medication standpoint. Now, we didn't go into how many candy bars you're eating, you're stressing yourself out, and all these other things. So That's right. And then when you look at all these illnesses uh, in terms of constipation, especially gas and bloating, you know, yeah. and uh, autoimmune disorders, arthritis, rheumatoid especially, autoimmune, and nausea, Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, uh, colitis, a lot of these illnesses probably have a significant yeast component, you know? Yes. So, uh, you know, we wanted to go over. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind with not only yeast, but pathogens and parasites. But we're going to go over those a little bit more specifically. But, Dr. Richardson, you had some therapeutics down here. Yeah, I want to go over some therapeutics. We have yeah. a very important test called the Comprehensive Digestive yeah. Stool Analysis, yeah. which really just grows out the different species of yeast in the, in the intestines right. and lets us know what uh, natural and prescription agents can destroy it. Right. There's a book called The Body Ecology Diet. There's books well, before called you, Candida. Before, before you go to that, on mm -hmm. that CDSA, mm -hmm. that's probably the, one of the most popular tests that we run in the office, and it really gives you a snapshot of the gastrointestinal tract, whether the person has yeast. Or no. you know, I hear a lot of people come in the office saying, I had yeast, and then you say, well, how do you know? Well, I think I have it. I read mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, somebody mm -hmm. looked in my eyes and told me. Somebody looked at my skin. Blah, blah, blah. They don't know. And so we've had people that thought they had the yeast, tested them, and they didn't. They That's may have true. had something else. So it's, it's nice to know for sure there is a test that can definitely check it. In the gastrointestinal tract, there is a blood test that checks antibodies, but we don't use right. that as much. That's true. But, and there's even a new test called Candido Complex, which we'll be using, which yeah. is really good as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent test. There's two books, uh, Body Ecology Diet and the Candido Control Cookbook, 
that are very important. Yeah, and a, and a body ecology diet is a tough diet. To, uh, I've heard so many people, but if you if you were to follow that, you know, it's such a high success rate, but it's tough to follow. They're food combining and certain things, uh, and then not eating anything with sweetness in it at all, and they substitute stevia, you know, mm -hmm. in there, which is a, which is an herb that tastes sweet but it actually has no effects, negative effects of the sweet. Yeah, stevia, S-T-E-V-I-A. Yeah, then what about pop de arco from the Tahibo tree in Brazil, that herbal? Bioseeding, garlic, golden seal, hydrogen peroxide, uh, externally and internally. Yep. And citrus seed extract, uh, tea tree oil, externally, caprylic acid, acidophilus. You know, you got to replace the good bacteria. That's a very important point. Anytime you take antibiotics, you need to take lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacter, um, bifidobacter I'm sorry, to uh, replace the good bacteria. And then there's olive leaf extract called Prolive. And again, the stevia instead of sweeteners and a relatively lower carbohydrate diet. And then there's certain grains that are less sweet, like quinoa and all the, you know, so yeah, you can yeah. find that in the body and, ecology and diet. And they're non-glutinous, too, so they don't stick and, and grow to yeast, encourage them more, but they keep uh, transiting through the system. Now, I'm going to go over a short thing before we go to a break, and it's parasites. Okay. And uh, few people uh, realize the enormous impact of parasites and diarrheal diseases on human health. Uh, diarrheal diseases... Uh, and bacteria as well as parasite uh, constitute the single uh, greatest single worldwide cause of death. In the United States, diarrheal diseases caused by intestinal infections are the third leading cause of death. That's in the United States. Uh, the present generation of Americans has grown up with many modern sanitary uh, conveniences, uh, assuming parasitic infestations uh, are encountered only in distant parts of the world hmm. uh -huh, by people in uh, impoverished area, rural, rural areas and from Americans traveling to those places. According to one leading authority, the United States citizen can acquire a host of different parasites, including uh, pinworms, what is card cardiasis, something like that. And, mm -hmm. and there's, uh, we got some, some technical names here. Uh, uh, without even a passport. In other words, you can get, get all that here. The ease and frequency of worldwide travel is one reason uh, that we discussed that, but also coupled with the increasing immigration into the United States as mm -hmm. well as importing of food and Americans' own sanitation problems that we hear about so much in the news all too frequently are making right. people sick and sometimes causing death uh, and is resulting in significant spread and incidence of parasitic infections. Parasites uh, are kind of interesting. They, they have different, uh, what is it, symbiosis? What is this other thing? It's commensalism, uh, two, two different types of parasites. But anyway, the host is injured to some degree through the activities of the, that is us, is injured, and it starts damaging tissue and consuming off of us. You know, commensalism. And, um, you know, that, those are just the, w the relationship of the host to the parasite. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can work together, and sometimes one is feeding on the other, and that's the parasite. Oh, okay. All right. Well, anyway, we just want to mention that, uh, you know, you can have some uh, symptoms, uh, abdominal pain, anorexia, that's losing the weight, autoimmune disease, uh, it can cause colitis symptoms, and a whole lot of things that you may, you may have a parasite. There's a whole long list. I think, mm -hmm. Dr. Richardson, in your practice, what kind of experience, you know, what kind of percentage we test for parasites with right. a special test? Right. It, you know, I would say, you know, in the population that we see, it can be up about 30 or 40 percent of That's people who have parasites. And it's more often immune compromise, um, uh, depending on certain sexual practices, as well as uh, international travel. I just had someone from another land that had three or four different parasites. Wow. That How did you determine that? Uh, we did a parasite test from Great Smoky Oh, Club. wow. And it came back with all that in it. Mm -hmm. I bet that's kind of shocking to get that <laughs> report back. That's right. And you, you start thinking, oh, this is in me. But we have a lot of stuff in us that we're not aware yeah, of. Yeah, that's you know? not even tested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Dr. Richardson, what about this helicobacter? Why don't you go over that for a minute, and then we'll take a break. Okay. Well, helicobacter is a uh, helicobacter pylorus is an, a bacteria that infects the upper gastrointestinal tract, namely the stomach and the duodenum, 
and it is literally associated with peptic ulcer disease and gastritis to the point that if you have recurrent gastritis or peptic ulcer disease and you have this bug eradicated, well, you have a 90 per plus percent cure. Good Lord, is it that high? It's that high, and we're using antibiotics and whatnot to do it, and um, it's one of the few times, I mean, that we do it. You know, antibiotics are quite necessary, it seems, although there are natural components that I don't know what tests have been done to prove that they work or not for helicobacter. Uh, but uh, Nature Sunshine puts out a HP factors, and I, I think it needs to be evaluated clinically by tests. Um, it, this, eradicating this bug also decreases the chances in the future of, of stomach cancer. So it's pretty important to get it tested if you have any chronic stomach problems in general. And it can be done by blood tests measuring the antibodies. And you can use those anti the changes in the level of antibodies uh, as a barometer as far as how well you're eradicating the disease. The disease. Well, Dr. Richardson, if you have a tendency to maybe overeat, uh, overeat in terms of uh, causing acid in your stomach, it might be that you'd be more susceptible to to in, not, in incubating that in your stomach. And, and a lot of times in this society, we're eating a lot of food combinations, a lot of meat that, that may incur it, where in other societies, maybe they're exposed to it, but it doesn't propagate. Because yeah, and I don't know any studies, but that sounds logical. Yeah, just, just wondering about that. So now. Okay, uh, well, you know, it's time for a break now. We will be back to discuss yeast candido. Uh, bacterial infections and parasites in the gastrointestinal tract, and we'll be entertaining your calls as well. We and certainly will. So this is Dr. William Richardson and John Richardson on WCLK Community Health Forum 91.9 FM, and we'll be back from the break. Hi, and thank you for listening to What Was It The Time, Dr. Richardson's very popular and informative, holistic, preventive, alternative health talk radio show designed to save lives, prevent disease, and reverse disease. Furthermore, if you are interested and in need of a holistic alternative medical doctor, you can reach Dr. Richardson at 770-419-4471. That's 770-419-4471. And be sure to visit our website at acpm.net. That's acpm.net. Hello, we're back from the break. This is Dr. William Richardson and John Richardson on WCLK Community Health Forum. We're talking about yeast, candida, and parasites. Yes, we are. It's a common problem in America and across the world. Uh, a lot of people taking the antibiotics, the birth control pills, the corticosteroid drugs, and also having dietary uh, imbalances that uh, can, can propagate uh, this type of uh, infestation or problem or infection in the body. A, a common the problem people keep talking about is the yeast. Do I have the yeast? How much yeast do I, do you have acidophilus? A lot of questions that relate to that, but that causes or is related to a host of illnesses. So what I want to do, folks, is, you know, we've been talking, 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 just trying to enlighten and educate us all. But we want you guys to share in with us. We want to open up the phone lines to you. You know the drill, how it works. We need your important input on this subject tonight of yeast, Candida, pathogens, parasites, problems you've had with your gastrointestinal tract. Anybody have yeast or candida, pathogens or parasites out there? We'd like to hear from you. And the number is 880-9255. You can call us immediately with your question or comment. Get your pen and pencil and write down your question or comment for Dr. Richardson so we can be efficient. You can call us on your home phone, your business phone, your cellular phone, your car phone, your pay phone, someone else's phone. Did I say that fast enough? Okay. Just be sure to call us and let your voice be heard. Our number here is 404-880-9255. We need to hear from you to see what you're thinking about what we're talking about tonight. So, again, we're going to ask you to call right now. Phone's a little bit quiet. we got a couple calls. We need you to light the lines up because we want to hear from you about yeast, candida, pathogens, parasites, digestive disorders, or whatever kind of disorder you want to call about. The number here is 404-880-9255. That's 404 404- 880-9255. We got some lines open now, and we advise you to give us a call while we do have lines open. They normally get jammed as we keep going. What do you think, Dr. We should go to our first call? Let's do it. All right. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. You're on WCLK with Dr. William Richardson. Thanks for calling. How you doing, brother? Good. Great. Yeah, my name's uh, Eric. I'm an international traveler. I get out a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm back and forth between uh, the 
throughout the Asia Pacific region and throughout Europe. Wow. But yeah. uh, I've had a cold here and there, and uh, I don't know if I'm bringing things back to the kids. So how could I check that? Are you talking about anything, really, I suppose? Parasites, uh, bacteria, right. et cetera? Yes. Okay, well, I would get a comprehensive parasitology test um, just to make sure that you're not carrying anything. And even if you're carrying something minor, that'll let you know that you've been exposed. Now, although you may have been exposed here or there, but okay, it will then. let you know that. And that's a test that you can get. It's a special test, and we can let you know how to get that. Uh, okay, you guys give that test? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. called a CP2, Comprehensive Parasitology 2. Okay, uh, I'll get your hotline number there. Yeah, and also you want to be, you want to probably call the CDC and get as much information about preventing this as possible, being an international mm -hmm. traveler. And this should be a message to all international travelers to beware and eat well, you know, take your own water or buy a bottle of water. You, have, you should buy a bottle of water here basically as well as anywhere on the planet. Um, and on and on. So make sure you, rec you know, you don't want to use, uh, you want to peel your fruits, all those types of things. So and that, that's an excellent point about the uh, water and the diet because uh, I eat lots of fruits and I do buy all my bottled water that's when I'm right. traveling. But I, I never peel the skins off of the fruits. That's, yeah. But yeah, it's, and many times it's crucial. Yeah. And you want to beware of salads, too, unless it's in a rep very reputable place. Okay, caller? Thank you. Thank All you right. for calling. Goodbye, Jim. Sure. Folks, the number here is 880-9255, 880-9255 with a 404 prefix. We do have some lines open. We'd like you to call us about yeast, pathogens, parasites, digestive disorders, or any kind of disorder. That's why we're here to answer and entertain your questions. We're going to run to another call. Call us, 880-9255 with a 404 prefix. Caller, are you there? Caller, are you there? Hello. You're on WCLK with Dr. Richardson. Thanks for calling. Yes, this is uh, James. Yeah, James. I've been uh, suffering like upper respiratory problems over the last couple of months. Yep. Just want to see if that's a possible symptom of Canada or could that be associated with a parasite? Well, if they're classic um, upper respiratory infection syndrome uh, symptoms, probably not. Um, it's, it could be something else going on with the immune system. Now, there may be a secondary association, in other words, maybe confounding factors. But I would really need to look. I would think you would want some holistic counseling and really look at your lifestyle, how much rest you're getting, the food you're eating, all the cycles, making sure. And if you're having fevers, then that is some cause for alarm. So y I would suggest you get a health consultation for something like that. And right. also, call a lot of times if you're having upper respiratory problems, uh, your digestion is off, and it may be that you're not eliminating appropriately. What is it? 80% of folks that come in our office uh, are, are constipated or they're backed up. And in Chinese medicine, the colon is a complementary organ to the lungs, and the upper respiratory system is affected. Oh, yeah, and if you, a lot of times we put people on a cleansing and detoxification program, and then all of a sudden, voila, their sinuses are cleaned out and all. So, but there are some herbs and things that we put people on for the upper respiratory, the ALJ, and things that clean out and help, you know, open up those passages. So there's a whole lot of things you can do. But parasites and candida wouldn't be our first you know, uh, uh, yeah. reasoning for that. You would just really need to see what's going on with yourself. Yeah, take a holistic approach to it. Exactly. exactly. Okay, we well, appreciate it. Sure, thanks. thanks. Folks, the number here is 880-9255, 880-9255. We do have a line or two open. We appreciate your participation tonight. We're going to ask Dr. Richardson to take another call. Caller, are you there? Hi. You're, you're on the air with Dr. Richardson. <laughs> How are you? Good. Excellent. Um, I have... I just turned on, and actually, y'all have, like, pinpoint me to the T. Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've had candidiasis for quite some time, but actually, it's more or less, it's real sensitive. It's not really caused by yeast. It's like if I use soap um, mm -hmm. in certain areas, my skin, it gets uh, eczema and the yeast down below mm -hmm, so i have mm -hmm. to use a particular type of soap definitely and so it's and perfume is like the worst i break yeah, out yeah, yeah and then with the mixture of um jewelry yeah. if it's 14 karat gold i have to go up 
<laughs> in order to wear it. Wow. You mean you have to wear higher carrot? Right. Yeah. And um, I've been, my husband and I are trying to um, eat better, mm -hmm. not a lot of beef, um, a lot of vegetables, green vegetables, trying to um, take more vitamins. Mm -hmm. Now let's just multivitamins. Uh, I've been taking something from the health food store that, that's been pretty good. And um, actually, the nutritionist at the store was telling me that, first of all, I need to do a colon cleanse. That's exactly what I was thinking. I think you need to do a colon cleanse. I would, in fact, suggest something like the Dowie cleanse, mm -hmm. then the para cleanse. I would load up on lactobacillus acidophilus, yeah. you know, the good bacteria. And the, she said that it has beta clay in there. That's really good sure. um, to really clean out your system. So I she, think you're headed on the right track. And I would also warn you to be wary about eating too much chicken, even though you're not eating beef. Unless it's very clean, like range-free chicken, it can be very deleterious to your health. Oh, okay. And I wouldn't depend on it for your protein source. I would still depend more on a plant-based protein source, mostly, and use chicken as a treat for roasting. <laughs> and, and you have to understand that chicken is pumped with the hormones and the antibiotics, but especially the hormones which will raise your estrogen level, which is implicated in fibrocystic breast disease as well as uh, breast cancer and tumors and cysts and all of that. And uh, that's why we're having so many tumors and cysts and breast cancer because right. it's, hey, chicken, chicken's fine, so, but the chicken's polluted. Yeah, okay. and, and really we should be eating like gorillas. <laughs> is that what you mean? Okay. All right, caller, we're going to have to run. Okay. All right, thanks. Number here, folks, 880-9255-880. I didn't make that sound real. Did <laughs> I sound like a gorilla? Yeah, I'm part oh, gorilla. Oh, oh. Okay, I, I don't, I I don't know. Yeah. All right, we're going to run to another call, folks. The number here is 880-9255. We're having a great discussion and a great participation from you tonight on yeast, candida, pathogens, parasites, all these type of things. So we're going to run to another call. Caller, are you there? Hello. You're on WCLK with Dr. Yes. Richardson. Could you talk a little bit more about the, um, the connection between the colitis and the acidophilus, and also talk a little bit about the podiaco. 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 Okay. And well, with the with colitis, um, is I've been taking. The, is it a lactobacillus acidophilus? Is mm -hmm. that a good acidophilus? It to is. Take? Well, that is the acidophilus okay. to take, and you like to take it in combination with Bifidobacter. What uh, was that again? Bifidobacter. B i f i d. Oh, wow, Bifidobacter, B-A-C-T-E-R, <laughs> Bifidobacter. Um, and then also you may want to take FOS, uh, fructooligopolysaccharides, and that's a good fuel. It's a fuel for the good bacteria. It doesn't feed the bad bacteria, and studies have shown that helps. So FOS, so you want the good bacteria with FOS, and there's different types of colitis. Well, there's colitis that are directly related to taking antibiotics from overgrowth of nasty bacteria called pseudomembranous colitis. Then there's just plain colitis uh, secondary to like irritable bowel syndrome components. Mm -hmm. Then there's the autoimmune situation called uh, ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes all of those types of entities will have a deficit of the good bacteria. So you want to keep that good bacteria up. And I would also do a stool test to see what type, some of the tests we're talking about, like the CDSA, to see what's going on in the colon so we can really pinpoint it. Now, Partiarco, as well as being a, Partiarco comes from a Brazilian tree called the Tahibo tree from Brazil. And I love Brazil. 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 Yes. And um, what the thing is, is that first of all, it's an immune potentiator. Also, it has plant tannins, T-A-N-N-I-N-S. -N 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 These tannins have anti-candido uh, as well as antibacterial components, and therefore, Partiarco is a major component in our uh, regimens that we prescribe. And, and we have a lot of experience with, with colitis and Crohn's patients come in, and um, if you're willing to do the work, uh, you can, you can uh, get better to a degree, maybe to a large degree, depending. There, uh, with colitis, there's also an emotional component, kind of a spiritual component, holding on to grudges, worrying, all this type of thing. So you really need a holistic approach to colitis. There's also uh, something out of Germany that shoots the immune system into, into uh, a high level that is also useful in colitis. So we, we know a whole lot of therapies 
with colitis because it's really a complicated illness. It's it not really easy to treat. And if you go to the regular gastro uh, gastroenterologist, you basically get, you know, some steroids and some anti inflams just to keep those symptoms abated. But we try mm -hmm. to analyze it past that. Yeah, it, I've, it, I've been in remission for a while just trying to oh, that's good. be healthy. And well, then that, take that's, care of it. Yeah. that's the time for you to, you know, really mm -hmm. study that and make moves so you never come out of remission. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's quite possible. So, well, callers, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. All righty. Number here is 880-9255, 880-9255. Uh, we're going to run to another call. Caller, are you there? Hello. You're on WCLK with Dr. Richardson. Thanks Hi. for calling. Good evening. Um, I really just wanted to get your opinion. I'm going to the Longevity Health Healing Center tomorrow and to do the uh, bioenergetic terrain assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm a chronic yeast person, and I've had a yeast infection for the last three months. And so I'm just wondering, is that the right way to go is to get this testing done? Well, I think the CDSA, the Comprehensive Digestive Stool Analysis, is the way to go for analyzing yeast candida infections because what you have to remember is that if, you have an, if you're having vaginitis, mm -hmm. um, it's usually seeding from the colon because the yeast basically is stored in the colon as well as the vagina too. But I think you can eradicate it best by a holistic uh, approach. You know, you have to look at the lifestyle and the diet and you have to know what herbs to prescribe, et cetera, et cetera. What are you looking for to find out from this test? Uh, we're familiar with this test, by the way, but why are you running this test? Because um, no one's been able to help me this far. I mean, I'm miserable with this. <laughs> it's been... I've been dealing with yeast on and off for... Have you, have you yeah. heard, did you hear our discussion uh, earlier on the remedies to this? Yeah, I sure did. Like, and like, actually would like to look into the books that you mentioned. Yeah, they're excellent. If you go on them, people have fantastic results, especially the body ecology diet. And, and those people who wrote the book, Donna Gates, is in town. In fact, she was carrying stevia. Uh, have you heard of stevia? No, I haven't. Yeah, you really need to hear about it because stevia is a herbal sweetener that has none of the sweetening, sweetening effects of uh, sugar in, the, in that it won't feed the yeast, it's antibacterial and candidal, and it won't give you any calories or anything. So it's a miracle when it comes to candida. I would say become self-empowered and read books and go basically in, in wherever you want in a way, just right. make sure that you're reading and you're understanding you're being as powerful as you can. Right. And make sure you get our health uh, hotline number for our newsletter. Okay, Does your, do, your, do you handle this type of situation at your office? Just about every day, yes. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Number here is 880-9255. Let's get some more calls in. Give us a call. Caller, are you there? Yes. You're on WCLK with Dr. Richardson tonight. Thanks for calling. Hello. You're on the air. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, doctor, um, yes. I'd like to ask you a question. My wife is uh, suffering from ulcerative colitis for the past six, seven months. She actually got it here in the States because we were living out overseas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got, like, a lot of questions about this, uh, this disease. We've been seeing a gastroenterologist. He's been taking acetyl and many other medications. Mm -hmm. But it seems like she gets better, gets worse, gets better. Could you, could you um, tell me a little more about this uh, disease and what uh, what type of, of medication uh, can treat this uh, this uh, disease? Right. Well, as far as the medicinals, I'm sure the gastroenterologist knows the medical drugs to to use for that disease, and and we're saying yes, use them at this time. Uh, what we're also saying is that there's a lot of things that aren't usually looked at, like for instance, the environment, the, the environment of, of the type of bacteria and, and, and yeast and all that sort of stuff in the colon. Because what you have to remember is over half of the feces are bacteria. Period. Right. So this is a very important uh, component. Uh, this ulcerative colitis is a disease of Western civilization. Right. Uh, period. It, you know, so... So you have to look at the stress levels, the fact that people don't live in villages like we did in the past, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, uh, we were we living out uh, like in Spain all her life, and you just moved in like a year ago. But five months after she was living here, she was a bit sad, you know, a little depressed because she got away from the families and that. 
Yeah. So five months after she 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 uh, she, uh, she was living here, mm-hmm. she just came out with the disease. She was feeling really bad. So it might be something emotional. I don't know. It it definitely is something emotional. Yeah. I mean, it definitely has a component, and she has to resolve those issues and come to grips and form a spiritual family here to replace that family. Right. right yeah, right. and and caller, we've had a lot of experience with this. Uh, the emotional aspect is, is important in terms of if 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 she handles stress. You know, bit different people handle stress different ways. Some people it goes and they get headaches. Some people get colitis. Some people get whatever. And so, mm-hmm. if that's an issue, if that's a component. You know, you have to learn the deep breathing, the meditation, the exercise, internal and external and all of that. And the mm-hmm. other thing I want to mention is food combining and body clock mechanics. In other words, over here in the United States, you can walk into a restaurant or a smorgasbord and get uh, 50 different foods and put them all on your plate and eat them all at the same time. So we really don't eat simply over here. We tend to eat complicated sandwiches and all these type of things mixed together. And that's, yeah, true. that's harder on the system right. to do that. And there are some great books on food combining and body clock mechanics right. that we recommend to patients when they come in as well as so many other things. So make right. sure that she reaches out. She can't just, the only, if she only deals with you and only deals with the doctor, with the medications, that's a big mistake. Not enough, yeah. She's going right. to have to reach out to heal herself spiritually too. Even if she has to take medicines, that's not necessarily. No, there's the point. a big curiosity about this because uh, I got her uh, her mother to come over from mm-hmm. Spain here. Yes. To to, to check her out, see see how she was doing. Yes. And uh, she probably got a lot. I mean, not like a seventy percent better. Exactly. I mean, uh-huh. it, it, it so was that's amazing. Just, <laughs> that, that's very important to know. That, that's a good point. Okay, right. thank you very much. Carl. All right, we're gonna have to run. All right, thank, thank you, you for calling. All right. Number here is 880-9255, 880-9255. We have a line open because he just got off the line. We're going to run to another line. Okay. All right. Caller, are you there? Hello. You're on WCLK with Dr. Richardson. Thanks for calling. Yes, hi. I am so glad you all have this program going on today. You just don't know. Good. Because um, for a long time, I've had like a real bad burning in my right side and they stayed for, like, years thinking it was a GYN problem. Mm-hmm. And they kept telling me stuff, like, put me through all these tests that I knew I didn't have any venereal diseases or mm-hmm. anything like that. I'm now 30 years old. I've had this problem for four years, and they're just now sending me to a gastrologist. And what they have me on is, like, just drinking water and um, magnesium citrate, which I don't like at all because I don't think it's doing anything for me. And my mm. skin is messed up. I still have this burning. Um, can't really have sex because it burns when I have sex, like the pain or whatever. And I just wanted to know, are there, like, fruits or anything that I can do more natural than taking all this garbage? Wow. Because it's, it's not working. Yeah, I would, again. And, it's, and you know what's so funny? Because I have a lot of friends where we're just not eating right. I can't even lie. I know <laughs> I'm not eating right. Right. Well, we have ways to remedy that. <laughs> we, we do uh, transplants, for our partial transplants books. of the brain, and books, too. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Right. But we, really, you know, God, give us a call because th- we love challenges. The and last we're gonna have that I have for you, I have a social group for women and do you find that a lot of the um, intestinal problems or whatever is generally more women than men that go through this? I'm not sure I could say that. Men go through a lot of gastrointestinal problems because of their very young personality, you know, right. and all the heartburn. I think women can go through other ones. But for that one, I think that's more equally shared in general. But women may pay attention to it more and men ignore it more. Right. Caller, we're going to have to go to it. And right ca- call us with your uh, support group. Let us know about that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Yes, uh, this is Dr. William Richardson and John Richardson. We're having a lively discussion, and we're going to a break, and we'll be right back on WCLK 91.9 Community Health Forum. Hi, and thank you for listening to What Was It The Time, Dr. Richardson's very popular and informative, holistic, preventive, alternative health talk radio show designed to save lives, prevent disease, and reverse disease. Furthermore, if you are interested and in need of a holistic alternative medical doctor, you can reach Dr. Richardson at 770-419-4471. That's 770-419-4471. And be sure to visit our website at acpm.net. That's acpm.net.
All right, we're back from the break, myself and Dr. Richardson, and I'm John. What we're doing tonight is talking about yeast, pathogens, parasites, candida, digestive disorders, and we're sharing the, the airways with you tonight. Uh, we talked about it earlier, went over some of the details, and now we're just taking calls and having conversation amongst ourselves and especially you. Uh, what we also want to say is if you need more information on what we're talking about tonight, we do have the health hotline, and, and we're featuring a new newsletter and that newsletter is out, and it's hot off the presses, and we invite you to get a copy, and amongst other things regarding Dr. Richardson's medical practice, holistic preventive medicine and the like. The uh, health hotline is 404-696-3029. That's 404-696-3029. We're going to run to some more calls, and I uh, just want you to know there's a whole lot more things we could go over with what we're talking about tonight. It's just time permitting. We don't really have that. There's the issue of intestinal permeability, which we didn't go over, but yeah. that's an issue that has a lot of linkages to illnesses. But in the interest of time and in interest of you, we're going to go to some more calls, try to finish this out. We're going to go on a five-minute drill here, Dr. Richardson, try to get through all of these calls. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. You're on the air. Greetings. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, my name is Shakura. Yes, go ahead. Can you, oh, okay, you can hear me. Yes. Uh, I'm calling. I hope this fits into the discussion for the evening. Uh, if Dr. Richardson can speak on a uh, common childhood uh, condition, uh, ringworm, oh, yeah. uh, where it comes from. I know it's a fungus, but um, we have a, a rash of outbreaks periodically at, a, um, at an agency and was just trying to figure out how we should uh, go about assisting the parents treat the children uh, preventively, what as well as then uh, afterwards when the sure. children have the uh, the infection. What type of agency exactly? <clears throat> uh, daycare. Okay, daycare. Yeah, so that means that we have to, first of all, uh, you have to get documentation um, th from a physician that they're being treated, or at least, you know, make sure they're being all being treated, mm -hmm. because as you know, it's communicable. It is a fungal infection. It's a superficial uh, skin fungal infection. Yes. And basically, if they're being treated, that's one thing. Now, the, with medication, and, and please make it be topical. Try to stay away from the oral medications that can blow away the immune system in the liver. Now, what do you do when it's in the scalp and the doctors give the, um, the, pills? the oral uh, medication yeah. for six weeks? Well, I, I personally don't treat it that way because I don't like the risk of the oral medications. Okay. And I just work real hard on the scalp. Keep the hair short, mm -hmm. use creams, mm -hmm. uh, necessary creams, certain shampoos like pine tar shampoo. Yes. And uh, it usually has worked, you know. And, uh -huh. um, and you know, I kind of nurse that scalp back to health. Okay. And you always have to use these things for about two weeks after it looks like it's gone because the yeast can hang out there. Plus, you have to get them off of sweet stuff like sugar and make sure they're eating good breakfast and green food twice a day, like broccoli and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So they have to eat really yeah. well. So I would have a mini session on nutrition yeah. and all that stuff and make sure they're not getting candy, okay? Okay, okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. We're going to go on to our next call. Thanks for calling. Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello. Yes, this is Dr. Richardson on WCLK. Go on with Hi. your question. Yes. Um, I've had a problem, I guess, with a lot of mucus in my system, and I've tried to alter my diet so that I'm not eating a lot of mucus-producing foods. Yeah. Um, but then it comes down, and I've also been trying to keep my colon clean and all this kind of thing. Right. But um, I'm, I know a lot of people will say that you should um, eat yogurt to reestablish the friendly bacteria, but then that pr produces more mucus. So I was mm -hmm. wondering what you thought about the best way to make sure that you have good bacteria in your colon, but at the good. same time... Not eat yogurt. Right. Yogurt's been associated with um, ovarian cancer. Oh. Be and, and it also probably drains uh, calcium from the bones because it has that, uh, that animal-derived protein. Mm -hmm. And also, well, let's see, what else? And it's very mucus-producing, like you said. Right. Definitely. So, I mean, th what I would use is simply you could use cultured vegetables sauerkraut-like stuff. Okay. You can use uh, oral lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacter um, supplements in powder form, all types of forms. I, I wouldn't even personally touch yogurt for that purpose. Okay, well, that was um, the other question I had because I read somewhere, I forget whose book it was, but they said that a lot of the um, acidophilus tablets and things don't have really don't have very many live cultures left, even though they had a lot when they were manufactured. Enteric-coated. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think, 
I, well, I would agree there's different um, gradations and all that sort of stuff. So I would get f from a reputable company. Okay. And, and there's plenty of them. Also, you want an enteric coated capsule. A lot of it is destroyed in the stomach and the small intestines. And the, the coated capsule will take it all the way down into the, uh, uh, the bowels. Okay, all yeah, right. Last thing, can you recommend a brand? Uh, Prima Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, thanks. Bye. We're going to run to our next to last call. Caller, are you there? Yes. I was wondering, um, at the beginning of your show, you were saying, like, um, overgrowth of yeast can can do something to your sex life. Is that correct? Uh, yes. You, okay. Yes. How, how can you improve that? I mean, as far as getting the yeast out of your body and for fatigue and things like that. Right. Well... I mean, fatigue, you have to go to bed on time, get up on time, and do the body cycles quite well. To deal with the yeast, you want to analyze it, find out where it is, possibly do a test like the CDSA, and then attack it with plant tannins like Partiarco and build up the good bacteria with uh, Lactobacillus acidophilus. Sometimes I even recommend certain douches, but, you know, beware, that never do a betadine douche because that can uh, increase cancer of the cervix. But there's a whole system. You want a holistic approach, call our health hotline to get our newsletter and you'll see so, sort of more what we do about su such things. Okay, and my last question. Have you ever heard of olive leaf abstract? That's one of our main components that we use. Okay. Uh, we do use that. ProLive is the brand we use for that. It's very oh. good. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go to our final call for the evening. Caller, are you there? Yes. Yes, you're our final call for the evening. Okay, I have a quick question yep. regarding uh, yeast and its effect on the sinuses and the lymphatic system. I have a, a son who currently has one of his lymph nodes swollen, and it's mm. been kind of like that for like two months. Hmm. And the doctors, the only thing they seem to prescribe is antibiotics, which, of course, I've been listening to your show, and that's kind of one of the worst things. And... The lymph node is still swollen, so what we've done within the last week is um, we have him on ALJ mm -hmm. and polyarco because he also has problems with his sinuses. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if there's anything else that we should consider. What does he eat for breakfast? Um, typically, uh, he's, he's not a big eater for breakfast. Um, like pancakes or what have you. Yeah, he needs to start with water, exercise, and then whole fruit. What does he eat for lunch? Um, well, he's, he likes pizza, but we're trying to get him off pizza. Okay. You have to control his lunch. How old is he? He's only four. Oh, okay, yeah. Totally control his whole lunch, um, and don't give him any dairy products. Call our health hotline, and we'll give you some more tips. Okay. Uh, I think you probably need to overhaul his diet in a very, for a strong way. We're not talking about being weak or flaky either, but sure. we're talking about a strong way. So you may want to call for a consultation. Our health hotline number will be announced. Will do. Okay, okay thank you very much. You're thank absolutely you. Uh, much uh, thanks for all your calls, and we welcome you to tune in in two weeks. We have uh, a few announcements before we sign off. All right, folks, uh, we're going to close on out and kick it on out of here, and uh, I'm sure Dr. Richardson, as well as myself, are grateful for your participation tonight.